The final preseason game is a wrap, and the Chiefs go winless in the preseason, falling 34-21 to the Bears at Arrowhead. We've seen more of the same tonight as we've witnessed for the entirety of the preseason as Carson Steele continues to play grown man football while others just look content watching him do it. Jaden Hicks popped off the screen for us last night yet again, proving that the Chiefs really did get a steal with the Washington State safety. We're all chiefed up, and we're back with another podcast for that ass, and this video is powered by BetUS. Steve, give them the rundown. You're listening to All Chiefed Up. Before I get started, do your boys a favor and hit that like button and hit the subscribe button. We're trying to get to 50,000 subscribers before the Super Bowl. Even though there was a football game last night, the only thing that got the blood flowing for Chiefs Kingdom, besides baby Thor running all over the Bears' defense was the news of the Creed Humphrey contract extension. That's right, Scott Stapp and the boys aren't the only Creed making waves out there in 2024. According to Ian Rappaport, Humphrey and the Chiefs agreed to terms on a four-year, $72 million deal that will make him the highest paid center in the league. Over the course of this new deal, Humphrey will average $18 million per season, making him the highest paid center in the history of the NFL based on annual average, surpassing the previous mark set by his teammate's brother, Jason Kelsey. Chiefs Kingdom has loved every minute of having Creed Humphrey on this football team, and now he's got the contract to prove it. Speaking of baby Thor, Carson still had himself a day. A good day to have a good day, young man. Carson had four carries for 50 yards and a touchdown with a long of 31 yards as he rumbled through the entire Bears defense. This dude is an absolute beast, and he's got the horn levels on 1,000. Kyle Brandt finally took some notice as he tweeted out eight angry face emojis, and we know what that means. Carson still, welcome to Kyle Brandt's angry run segment. People are calling for Steele to be RB2, and more than likely he will essentially be that, as we think Clyde will run the Jarrett McKinnon row as more of a pass catcher this year. Props to Carson Steele on a big preseason. You've made Crocky J a proud son. First up in the wide receiver saga, we seen the Chiefs announce that Sky Moore would not play a single snap on offense, pretty much solidifying his roster spot, and the Sky Moore Haters Club is in complete shambles right now. He did, however, come in briefly for a nice kickoff return, which honestly fits what he did in college, making people miss in tight spaces, as he led the NCAA in missed tackles forced his senior season. The wide receivers that got the most reps in the first few series were Justin Ross, McCo Hardman, and Kadarius Toney. Some in the kingdom think that Toney and these wide receivers didn't get a fair shake. Mark Gunnels wrote on X, I think it's totally unfair for the receivers fighting for a roster spot to have to play with this level of QB play. Yeah, I wouldn't say, I mean, we, we went through last year with him, so we, we kind of know what he is. He's a talented kid, and... Uh, um, you know, he's in a battle to make the team and all that bit, but he, he's a, you know, he's, we've never questioned the talent there at all. So it's just him staying healthy was the main thing. Some other receivers that are fighting to make this calling his shot last week and breaking a 64 yard reception for a touchdown. Pal had two catches for 16 yards, scored his second touchdown of the preseason and quite possibly caught an attempted murder charge as he tried to twist Tyler Scott's head off of his shoulders on a kickoff return. The instant regret was hilarious, though. Lewis Reese Zamet got a few chances to showcase how he's progressed so far. He had four carries for 21 ball field. He still might have passed in Eric Prince on the depth chart after his abysmal performance of three carries for minus one yard. Hell, at this point, even you, yeah, you watching right now, might have actually passed in Eric Prince on the freaking depth chart as well. Steve, let's start with Creed Humphrey's contract extension. What did you think about it? Let's go, baby. Creed's going to be a longtime chief, let's and it's go. well freaking deserved. You were talking about that little bit of money they had in the salary cap, about $15 million, and you said they're not going to go try to sign somebody outside of the locker room. They're right. going to go ahead and start trying to lock up some of these guys. They have to sign at the end of the year because there's a lot of mouths to feed. Creed Humphrey was first in line. He's been extended. I'm excited about it. Now they can look on to Nick Bolton and Trey Smith. Yeah, look, Creed is a good locker room guy. He doesn't get in trouble. He's smart. He had a little bit of snap issue happen last year, but it looks like he's even changing that. There was some stuff out on X showing that he was holding the ball differently and things. I think it's going to be completely fine. I'm glad we got him back in KC. We got him here for a longer portion of his career. I hope he finishes his entire career here, and I hope we're still winning Super Bowls the entire time Creed Humphrey is extended for. But let's move on to the wide receivers, Steve. Sky Moore 
did not play a single snap on the offense. I hate to say I told you so. Been trying to tell everybody Sky Moore ain't going nowhere. He's not going to light the world on fire, Mike, but he does the little things right that Andy Reid likes. He's also just on his third year of his rookie contract. He was a second round draft pick. They've invested a little bit in this kid, and I think they see something in him. If they can use him properly, and by properly, I mean get him the ball quick. Get him the ball in space. Let him work. Let him create yards after the catch. He makes people miss. That's what he does. I think he can be pretty successful this season. Right. Look, he's got to turn it on this year, though. I'm tired of talking about it. I'm tired of waiting on him. Third year is the charm. Sky's got to do better than one catch for eight yards, two catches for 16 yards. That's not even Applebee's. Two for 20 last year. He's he's not even showing up to the <laughs> MVS show here. Kadarius Tony, Steve, make himself part of this 53-man roster. I think that what Kadarius Tony was able to do in his first half season with the Chiefs when they won the Super Bowl against the Eagles, I think that the coaches still remember that and they know what he can offer this team. He had a down year last year, and they just want some damn consistency out of him, Mike. Just be healthy. Just be available. And then make good football plays. Don't make dumb penalties. That's what's been hurting them too. But I think his upside is so high and he's on his contract year, they might be willing to gamble and roll the dice on it this year, man. I've been saying for a long time, I wouldn't be surprised if you don't see the usual suspects in that wide receiver room. A lot of people talk about who's going to be the wide receivers outside of the top four, which we're calling Xavier Worthy, Hollywood Brown, Rashi Rice, and Justin Watson. And I've said all along, do not be surprised And do not cry yourselves to sleep at night if the Chiefs come out and say they're going to take seven, and the last three being McCole Hardman, Kadarius Toney, and Sky Moore. Yeah, you're probably right here. I think Justin Ross might be on the outside looking in. He always has a good offseason. He has a good preseason. This guy's the preseason champ. He's undefeated, and I would love to see him make the team. I just don't know how they're going to get him on, especially if they do take Kadarius. It's Justin Ross, and it depends on how they approach this situation. Do you want to put him on the team because you don't want another team to come get him and beat you to death with him? Because there's some AFC contenders that would love to have Justin Ross in their wide receiver room. Yeah. A, the Bengals, B, the Bills, Chargers. There's lots of other teams that could take that kid and use him effectively. And do the Chiefs think about that? Like, do we want to give him to a competitor? I don't know if that'll play a part in it or not, Mike. I would like to see Justin Ross make this team and maybe let McCole Hardman move on, but we'll see how it goes. Steve, the running back room, that's a big subject right now. And last night we seen Carson Steele absolutely tear it up he was throwing the stiff arms he was chunking off yardage he got his second touchdown of the preseason crocky j our boy from ball state from ucla the udfa doing the lord's work out there for the chief steve is he running back two over clyde edwards hilaire what do you think honestly i don't think it really matters now what the fans are going to say is yes he's running back two. clyde doesn't offer enough he misses too much with his PTSD or his sickness or whatever it might be. They're just going to say he's not reliable, right? That's what they've been saying about Clyde since year two. However, you mentioned this on a live stream last night. I don't think it really matters outside of Isaiah Pacheco because the rest is going to be situational. It just depends what's going to fit the mold. Is Clyde going to be the better person on the field for this play that they're doing, or is it going to be Carson Steele? I think they'll switch those guys around, rotate them, use them sparingly sometimes. You'll probably see a whole lot of Pacheco, but I think Clyde's going to be the third down back that takes that McKinnon role. Carson Steele is going to get a lot of short yardage carries, and they might work him into the passing game as well. I totally agree. We got to see a lot of running backs work last night. Keontae Ingram, Amani Bailey, LRZ even got some snaps, Steve. And Zama looked pretty good. He rushed for a few times. He had a gain of 10 yards. He actually didn't look as timid. I think he's improving. He's trending up. But I don't know if it's going to be enough to keep him off the practice squad. It feels like that's where they're going to go. And I honestly feel like Daenerys Prince, who went for minus one yard after he just Parson still, he already got past there. Is Daenerys Prince in danger of going back to the practice squad and possibly just getting cut, period? Honestly, I think it depends on how many running backs they decide to go with. I think if they want to go with four like they usually do, I guess because of injury purposes and just having some depth there, then maybe he can squeeze his ass on this roster, Mike, because LRZ, I don't think he's going to be able to make it this year. He's probably going to the practice squad. Like you said, I do love the progress I'm seeing from LRZ because when he was first on the football field three weeks ago, he looked lost. He literally looked lost. It looked like every time he got the ball in his hands or every time he was on the field, he had to think about everything. And it made him slow. It made him awkward. 
he looked a little more smooth tonight. So I saw pretty good progress just in two weeks. So I'm excited for what he has in store for later in his career. But it's just going to take some time with him. Before we head out of here, just want to give a quick shout out to BetUS for sponsoring this video. If you want live wagering on all major games with the best variety in the business, plus 24-7 personalized service, 365 days a year, then BetUS is where you want to be. BetUS can also give you your very own personal account manager. How cool is that? There's a tons of prop bets with the Chiefs players, wins totals, and much, much more. And right now they're offering 125% sign-up bonus on up to $2,000 on your first three deposits. So come make some bets with us today at BetUS. Click that link in the description or in the pinned comment. And don't be a slap nut. Go check out BetUS. Yeah, don't be a slap nut. Thanks for liking, subscribing, and hitting that bell. We'll catch you next time. Chiefs. Chiefs.